I wake up choking and my wife rolls me over on my left side. Then I'm asleep in the dream I always see, the tunnel choked, the dark wall coughing dust. These haunting words come from Muriel Rukeyser's poem, The Book of the Dead, a section of the work based on an interview she conducted with Merle Blankenship, a victim of the Hawk's Nest disaster in West Virginia. Like many of his fellow Union Carbide miners, Blankenship would die succumbing to the effects of silicosis. Rukeyser left, arrived in the area in 1936 with photographer and filmmaker Nancy Nomberg, right, intent on documenting the horrors of what has been called the worst industrial disaster in U.S. history. It all began in 1930 when the company started drilling a three-mile tunnel through Gauley Mountain. The project was developed to reroute New River through the mountain in order to generate electricity with a hydroelectric dam as seen in this photo by Nomberg. Early in the tunnel excavation, miners encountered a remarkably pure deposit of silica, and as they drilled through the deposit without respirators or other safety equipment, they breathed in silica dust microscopic bits of glass that slowly formed scar tissue in the miners' lungs until they could no longer breathe. Of the 3,000 workers involved in the project, roughly two-thirds African-American, somewhere between 750 and 2,000, died as a result of their exposure to silica. Another section of Rukeyser's Book of the Dead, titled The Disease, draws on x-rays and medical testimony, evidence from lawsuits against the mining company and its contractor. The section viscerally describes silica's effects on the lungs of miners affected by the disaster over time. This is the x-ray picture taken last April. I would point out to you, those are the ribs. This is the region of the breastbone, and this is the heart, a white shadow filled with blood. This lung's mottled, beginning in these areas. You'd say a snowstorm had struck the fellow's lungs. And now, this year, short breathing, solid scars, even over the ribs, thick on both sides, blood vessels shut, model conglomeration. Along with this medical testimony and the words of the miners and their families, Muriel Rukeyser weaves together scenes from the local community, descriptions of the natural landscape surrounding the tunnel disaster, and congressional testimony taking place in the wake of the disaster in order to highlight the mining company's racial and labor injustices. With this hybrid poetic documentarian approach, the Book of the Dead's narrative is one of accountability, demonstrating how Union Carbide consistently minimized the horrors of the disaster and disavowed responsibility as Rukeyser catalogs the consequences of the corporation's practices. In addition to the medical trauma of silicosis, she also illustrates the inescapability of the white silica dust on the primarily black workers' clothes and skin, in their campsites, and even in the milk-white drinking water provided at the site. Finally, she also notes their ultimate disposability, as dozens who perished in the mine were buried in mass graves, unmarked until relatively recently. Though Nomberg abandoned the collaboration through Kaiser, these two recently rediscovered photos underscore the impact of Union Carbide's negligence in their stillness and the looming absence of the workers in their homes and communities like the neighboring Gali Bridge and Veneta, but also the unseen African-American communities in the U.S. South that these workers left in order to seek opportunity. These photos and Rukeyser's The Book of the Dead show how employers like Union Carbide, through their greed and indifference, transmute hopeful workers' shared American dream into suffering and haunted, empty landscapes.